The issue of abortion is used by the media to pit the church against science. While this attracts viewers, it does not accurately portray the truth. Well, I think that there are some misconceptions about stem cell research and, and Christian religion and science and, and ideology and um, the ethics and the politics of it. And one of the things that people are most often surprised about is that at our, at our Catholic universities, well, we do stem cell research um, on adult stem cells. The research that I've done, the reason that I've done so that, you know, with adult stem cells, um, 56 different diseases Currently, adult stem cell research is aimed at returning multipotent adult stem cells to the pluripotency of embryonic stem cells. One technique used by Kevin Egan at Harvard is reprogramming. Reprogramming takes an adult skin cell and an embryonic stem cell. The cells are then fused, thus generating an adult stem cell with the qualities of embryonic stem cells. Halfway across the world in Australia, trans differentiation is favored. This technique removes an adult nasal stem cell and numerous growth factors and genes. Those stem cells have then differentiated into heart, kidney, brain, and muscle cells. The last technique practiced privately in Chicago is cell fusion. Cell fusion, like reprogramming, requires an adult cell and an embryonic stem cell. The difference is that in cell fusion, the nucleus of the embryonic cell is removed and the cytoplasm of the embryonic stem cell yields a pluripotent adult stem cell. These three techniques provide researchers with a way around the ethical dilemma and federal limitations associated with embryonic stem cell research. While it avoids the limits, it is not perfect. These techniques each present problems of their own. Reprogramming currently works in one out of 1,000 skin cells, and both embryonic and adult stem cell nuclei remain in the cell. In cell fusion, the technique is patented, and in trans differentiation, the daughter cells it generates can only differentiate into a limited number of cells. Those techniques help to pave a new future, a future that results in unnecessary research due to government constraint. To alleviate the delays this presents, the current policy must be adjusted, increasing federal funding and the number of cell lines available for embryonic stem cell research.